so my exactly. name is Minya. I have a background in, in architecture and I would like to mention that because my dissertation is basically my thesis is focused on the concept design development in architecture and its uh, and implementation of generative design in such phase. Why I have focused on this topic is because I do recognize mostly with working with concept design and competition designs the significance of this stage to set the tone for the further design uh, phase development phases with the traditional challenges which usually include limited physical prototyping other than maybe making scale models we need to rely now on virtual simulation and uh, having in mind that um, shift is happening right now towards more technological innovation my question was can generative design as an approach be used to enhance uh, this concept design stage. I wouldn't go into details regarding the theoretical part of the background, but I would just like to mention what is the generative design based on. It is mostly based on using algorithms and evolution to quickly generate and explore various uh, design solution, thus switching the focus from traditional constraints and enhancing the design process. Mentioning, uh, just a sec, uh -huh. okay, mentioning genetic algorithms. Um, again, I would like to emphasize the logic behind it, which is to mimic natural selection and genetic processing and mostly focus on the concept of survival of the fittest. Going back to the work performed in this study, I would like to say that the beneficial stage set for this uh, whole uh, study was to split the process in three sections, one being uh, problem definition, the second one being design space exploration, and the third one evaluation and refinement. I would explain each and every stage a bit further. And before I begin explaining it, um, I would like to say that mainly in, um, mainly in architectural field, I have um, I have got to know that lots of architectural studios use various um, softwares to perform any kind of concept design studies. But having performed um, some kind of um, survey questionnaire with industry experts, it has been decided to use Grasshopper within Rhino as a main software, as a main platform, uh, although implementing it in the later stages within Revit as a BIM environment. So to explain how the pro problem definition stage uh, starts, I would just like to emphasize that the illustrative case study was used, meaning it's uh, just a test project, but that helped me a lot to perform a systematic examination and to isolate some of the influences all, of all the components onto the, the, the solution generation. It is important at the very beginning of the study to carefully uh, focus on um, constraints, parameters, and objectives. For the purpose of this case study, constraints and parameters were identified as mostly geometric parameters, but I would like to maybe focus a bit more on the objectives, which as we all know, could be from geometrical properties all way to more general ones and more objective ones, even some of them being subjective, such as aesthetics, for example. So this was really um, interesting to find a way to put all to put all these objectives to a um, case study. What I would like to mention that it's important is to correlate and to connect each and every design objective with, with an indicator, which needs to be a data that can 
be extracted for the model. So for example, aesthetics, I formulated as a correlation to the roof area and objective being to minimize it, to preserve the proportion, proportions of the building. Uh, to um, create computational model, I again found it quite um, beneficial to split it into phases. So I can address what are the inputs, what are constraints, and what are the outputs in each and every stage. Design space exploration is uh, the focus stage of this simulation. But before we run the simulation, some stuff needs to be defined, such as algorithm selection. Uh, Valase, used as a plugin for Grasshopper, has it um, is defined, it's uh, based on the non-dominated sort sorting genetic algorithm. So the parameters for the algorithm were predefined in the plugin. What I can mention is that not all the plugins are based on this algorithm. And also even within Valase, we can change the predefined parameters. That's not a problem. What is up to designer is to choose the generation size and generation count, which is basically a number of solutions per, uh, produced in this simulation. And going over uh, of all the simulation parameters, what I found quite interesting is the size of our search space, which is summarizing all the inputs into the, the simulation and basically collecting how many possible combinations we can achieve within simulation. This is just a preview how it looks when you run the simulation. On the right, you can see an overview on how many solutions can be generated in one simulation. And on the left, you can just see a uh, focus on one specific um, solution with the data that can be extracted, which is basically the name of the solution consisting of generation and the number of a solution within the generation and the data uh, based on five chosen objectives. So basically design space exploration is focusing on generating and thus refining solutions iteratively. Why do I emphasize this is whenever I try to set up and run simulation, I gave the new knowledge about the design. I had to go to the very end of the, uh, to the very beginning of the study and to modify a bit the computational model, the parameters, even the constraints, the correlation between the parameters and even the objectives until I have found the study and the computational model to be working as I intended it to be. After we have run the simulation for this specific case study, I have run the simulation of 50 generations, each having 10 solutions, that's resulting in 500 solutions. Among this, 128 were were Pareto optimal, meaning that all the objectives in are in such a balance that making one of the objectives better means that we need to make some of the objectives worse, thus revealing the trade-offs. Uh, how to visualize and further analyze these trade-offs? We have many techniques, one of them being parallel coordinate plot, the other bit the other one being 3D Pareto front. And I would like to say that in this stage, if we have a specific goal, for example, maximizing total floor area, we can straight away choose the design solution which benefits this objective the best. But having in mind to explore the topic even further, I have chosen to continue the study and to see how we can narrow this 128 solution even more. There are many techniques to do that, but uh, I found the uh, clustering quite interesting and actually um, it worked out very well. Clustering means that we have, we can group this solution into three or more if chosen groups of solution with similar characteristics. So we can analyze only the representative solutions. 
And here is the representative of final three solutions where we can, other than examining the aesthetics of the project, for example, we can also dig deeper into the objectives. And for example, through the diamond fitness charts to see which of the objectives is more emphasized for this project. And uh, having no real case studies, real life case study scenario, I, I decided to go with the most balanced approach to carry out the rest of the study, with thus meaning C1 was chosen. And for the very end, where, where we, when we have uh, found our one solution, there is a um, there is a solution. There is a possibility to transfer it very easily to the uh, rabbit environment. Having in mind that all of the documentation processes now nowadays mainly are within rabbit or other beam environment. And the design integration using Rhino inside, I have found it quite easy and intuitive, but having in mind that the computational model was developed um, strategically at the very beginning of the study. So to summarize it, there are many straits and many weakness weaknesses for the use of the generative design, but I would like to address some of the impacts being um, exploration efficiency, optimal solution, collaboration, and iteration. It did showcase adaptability and applicability. Also, it did very much accelerate the workflow. It optimized the concept and promotes inventive ideas, meaning that I have started with a blank page and I have managed to very quickly generate a solution which can be iteratively like um, of worked on a bit later. It did overcome traditional limitation and it did reduce human biases, which is not always a good thing, but there is always a side of uh, architectural creativity that is used within the process. Challenges, which I have found mostly by interviewing um, industry experts were education deficits on this topic, resistance to change within the companies and time constraint, uh, constraints, which I have to emphasize because it is quite consuming at the very beginning to formulate the problem and computational model effectively, but it does help at the later stages very much. And for some of the future uh, avenues, I would maybe like to emphasize the possibility of using machine learning. Okay, and I hope I was brief enough. <laughs>